I can think of plenty of reasons to grow broccoli, plenty. Perhaps it's the prospect of picking deliciously tender spears in early spring when there's little else to pick. Or maybe it's the fact it's just so incredibly good for you. Or just the fact they're so darn delicious. Hi, I'm Ben and today I'm going to walk you through all the steps you'll need to grow a bumper crop of broccoli. And it all starts right now. First off, let's have a quick overview of the different types of broccoli. Now this is what most of us call broccoli, but depending on where you are, you might also call it Calabrese broccoli or just Calabrese. It produces these big, fat, chunky heads and they're generally picked, at least in my climate, from early summer through to early autumn. It's not especially hardy and is best sown in spring. For the purposes of today's video, we'll just call it broccoli. And then there's sprouting broccoli. Sprouting broccoli is a lot hardier and is sown in spring to early summer to give a crop in the cooler months, usually from late winter through to spring. The spears themselves are available in white, cream, or my personal favorite, purple sprouting broccoli. Both types of broccoli are absolutely fantastic crops. And if you grow them both, well, you should get a good spread of spears throughout most of the year. It's mid spring, which is the perfect time to sow some broccoli. Let's do it. Like many vegetables, when you're sowing them outside of the main growing areas, you can sow them into plug trays or into pots to then transplant into plug trays later on. If you've got lots of seed, and broccoli seed is quite cheap, you could sow into the plug trays two or three seeds into each cell and then just thin them to leave the strongest behind. I prefer to sow into pots and the reason for that is uh, twofold. The very earliest sowings are made in late winter and uh, germinated indoors to help speed germination along. So by sowing into pots they take up a lot less room. But also, I really rather enjoy the whole uh, transplanting or pricking out stage, moving the seedlings into the plug trays. I just like the interaction with the seedlings. It feels honest somehow. It's like uh, mindfulness as well. You're absorbed in the moment, and that's a great thing about gardening. So I've just sown them into this pot, scattered very thinly, and I'm just putting over a mere suggestion of more potting mix over the top and you can use a seed starting mix for this. I'm just using an all-purpose mix. Broccoli seeds, like many brassicas, germinates with amazing speed, three to four days sometimes, so it won't be long before these are up. And when they are, I will transplant them almost immediately. They don't mind being transplanted young, they don't seem to even notice the transition, and the seedlings are much smaller and the roots smaller, which makes them easier to handle. Quick shout out to this broccoli here in the greenhouse that's grown from a fallen seed, germinated and clearly thrived. Look at it. You can carry on sowing, say once a month, to enjoy a steady harvest right up with the last sowing finishing in late spring. For the sprouting broccoli, well, I'm going to wait another month or a month and a half before sowing those. And the reason for that is by sowing in late spring or early summer, you can have seedlings ready to go out once your earlier crops are finished. So that's the likes of, say, garlic, salads, peas, fava or broad beans. Once those have taken out, you'll have your other sprouting broccoli ready to go in. It makes better use of space that way, and you've got follow-on crops ready to go. Over here are some broccoli I sowed earlier and transplanted into their own plug trays about two weeks ago. They're now ready to go out. The ideal time for planting them is when they're say four to six inches, that's 10 to 15 centimetres tall, and with about two sets of adult leaves. So these are just perfect and they've filled their plugs. Let's get them planted. So the broccoli is going to go into this bed. It gets a nice amount of sunshine, which they obviously prefer for fueling their growth. But if you're in a hot climate, you might like to offer a bit of shade or even just dappled shade, because this is a cool season crop. I prepared the bed here with about an inch or two to three centimetres layer of compost or you could use manure or a combination of the two. If you are in a very hot climate then actually you might be best sowing later in summer or even early autumn to make the most of those slightly cooler winter months. In fact let me show you how that works using my garden plan here. I've changed its location to show as Austin, Texas to make this example. 
It's pretty warm down there in the summer and the garden planner knows this because it uses local weather data to work out sowing, planting and harvest times. So if we go up to the plant list here, we can see that for broccoli, the sowing and planting dates have been split between very early spring and autumn, thereby avoiding the very hot period in the middle of summer. Pretty clever stuff, hey? If you're interested in the Garden Planner, you won't find it in the App Store, so I will pop a link to it down below. I'm going to plant these broccoli about, well, between about one foot and um, 18 inches apart. That's uh, 30 to 45 centimetres. You've got two options, really. You can plant them a little bit closer, but you'll get slightly smaller spears, or you can plant them further apart and get bigger spears. So I reckon I can get about eight in this space here. And then to plant, I'm just gonna use the base of my trowel as a, as a dibber to make a hole, and then drop the plug down up to its lower leaves like that. With them planted, all I've got to do now is just give them a good soak to settle them in. The sprouting broccoli will go out later in the summer and I'll plant them about uh, the same distance apart, 18 inches or 45 centimetres, or you could go a little bit wider than that for bigger heads. Like other brassicas, broccoli can get hammered by some very specific pests. Broccoli that's planted early and harvested by midsummer may well escape the attentions of caterpillars and will therefore not need covering. But from midsummer onwards, you really need to have some sort of uh, protection in place against not just caterpillars, but things like uh, aphids and white fly and flea beetles as well. Insect mesh cover like this here is just perfect. It's very light, very airy, so get a good airflow underneath it. Just uh, make sure it's properly supported. I'd suggest bamboo canes thrust in and then upturned bottles to stop it from ripping the uh, mesh here. Make sure it's pinned down at the edges nice and securely so that both pests can't get in from underneath it and you don't get birds trapped in there as well. Covers can be removed right at the end of the growing season when uh, caterpillars and so on aren't a threat anymore. But then as winter approaches, pigeons become the main threat. They can thread leaves pretty quickly. So put up netting for them for sprouting broccoli and keep that in place until early to mid spring when there's more natural food around for the pigeons. Or you can just leave your covers in place all year round. There's no harm in doing that. I love this mesh. It keeps everything out. The fine gauge means nothing can get through. So this is my number one cover. As far as ground care is concerned, just keep the soil nice and moist because that is what the broccoli loves and they'll grow stronger, which will make them better able to repel pests. If you're in a hot climate, you could really help broccoli and all your brassicas out by just giving the leaves a bit of spray of water to help cool them off on hot sunny days. What else? Well, keep the area clear of weeds and then top up mulches in late summer around sprouting broccoli plants. And as that mulch rots down, it'll feed the soil and give your broccoli that extra nutritional boost they need coming out of winter and into spring. Finally, pick off any yellowing or dead leaves because if those fall to the ground, they're more likely to attract slugs and you don't want them about. Harvesting broccoli is the really exciting part, your reward for all of your patience. That said, the fastest growing types of standard broccoli will be ready within about two months from sowing. To harvest the heads, you want to make sure that the florets are still tightly closed. Once they start to go soft and open a bit, they're past their best, though the head is still perfectly edible. To harvest, cut with enough stalk to hold it all together, but you don't want to harvest so low that the secondary crop of uh, heads that follow is compromised, which they will do. They form a second smaller harvest about two to three weeks later after the main harvest is taken. Don't discard that stalk. It's actually got a slight sweetness to it. I save mine up to use in a nice vegetable soup and they're absolutely delicious that way. Broccoli is so good for you, you don't want to waste any of it. It's got loads of vitamin C for boosting your immunity. It's got antioxidants and all sorts of good stuff to keep illness away. Sprouting broccoli won't be ready till late winter or spring. Like our standard broccoli, you want to harvest it so that there's enough stalk left to produce a secondary smaller crop of spears. 
This is almost ready. I reckon it's another two to three days away. Sprouting broccoli, like many winter vegetables, improves with a few frosts. And that's because the frost helps the plant convert starches into sugars, which helps it survive the cold. As well as staggering your sowing times and harvesting correctly to get a secondary cut, you can ensure the longest possible harvesting window by selecting the right varieties. Starting with broccoli to give you that harvest from early summer through to autumn, and then finishing with sprouting broccoli in the spring. And many varieties have different sowing dates and growing times from sowing to harvest. And by paying attention to that, you'll get the longest possible harvest. Wonderful. I hope this video has given you a few tips. If it has, give it a muddy old thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And do join in the conversation. What do you prefer, broccoli or sprouting broccoli? Let me know down below. I'll catch you next time.